I do want to just quickly show you guys how to use SAMN and RSAM. Um, so these are both algorithms for RNAC quantification. And what that means is you want to measure, I guess, the level of gene expression that you have in your samples. Um, and so for those of you who are in, who are in lecture today, um, so I guess my question is, what are two potential confounders of, of read count? If you're just looking at the raw, for example, in my sample, um, 50 reads align to this gene. Um, so what are two potential problems with using that as a measure for, for gene expression? Or, or what's one? Yeah, someone said in chat, depth and gene length. Yeah, so I think longer genes, um, you can see more counts from genes that are just physically longer in the genome. Um, what's, what's the other one? Uh, sequencing depth, I assume. Yeah, yeah, li library size. So like, for example, if you, in one like experiment, you see a hundred reads or a hundred reads mapped to this gene. I um, mean, then the next experiment, um, a thousand reads um, mapped to this gene. It could just be that in the second experiment, you had like 10 to a hundred times as many fragments. Um, and so for you know, there's no actual difference. Um, and so to get around this, like we introduced, um, I guess these four measurements today, um, counts per million, RPKM, FPKM, and then TPM. Um, and so counts per million um, are kind of the simplest, um, which is just like for a given gene, um, you're just looking at the number of reads like per a million fragments um, sequenced. Um, yeah, so for example, um, if you have a thousand reads that map to the gene CD8, um, but you sam sequenced a billion fragments, then the counts per million for that gene would only be one. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then RPKM, you essentially take the counts per million and then divide by the length of that gene. Um, and then TPM kind of reverses the order where first you divide by the length of the gene in, in, kilobase, in kilobases. And then you normalize that, I guess, per million. Um, any like any questions about these four measurements? That I can clarify here. And I think the lecture video that she included um, is great. So. I'd suggest watching that again if, if you're confused. Um, and so SAMN and RSAM are both algorithms that are gonna get you these four measurements. Um, okay, so let's talk about SAMN. Um, so SAMN is, is a, a pseudo mapper. Um, so it's not actually going to like give you like a real alignment. Um, it's really just primarily for measuring the amount of gene expression. Um, so you're not actually gonna get like, uh, like a raw sequence alignment like you would with, with STAR. Um, okay, but let's briefly go over the, how you'd run this. Uh, okay, so you can give it a fast queue file as input, start a job, so go to a compute node, module load salmon, um, and then the main command is salmon quant, so quantification, um, and then the, inputs that you want to give it are, um, so the path to the index. So salmon contains like a list of known, I think it's a, I think it's a list of known transcripts. It might be just exons, I'm not entirely sure, but you can, the index is in the stat 115 index folder. Um, next you give it the path to the input reads, which are the fast queue files, um, number of threads, um, this will automatically detect if it's paired end or single end. I think these are single end for this, this problem. Um, 
and then dash O. So it's going to create an output directory. Um, you just want to name that output directory, um, whatever, whatever you want. Um, okay. So I assume at this point, I think I've kind of explained like how to load the modules. Um, so is, are we okay with this? Um, it's kind of getting late in the piece set or the homework. So I don't, I don't know if anybody's done this yet since it's still due um, in a couple of days or like at the end of the week. Um, so, so, sorry, so for this each, each line, do you just run it separately? Like specify one line and then enter and then specify the, the other one and then enter? No, so it's all, it's just, it's like, uh, so it'd be like Sam and Quant space minus I, whatever space minus r so there's no don't put any like new lines and you know sorry if that's a little confusing but it's just like it's just like you would for star where it's just like space you just put spaces in between like the different options no no new lines should the input be bam files or that seems to be what the homework is asking for Uh, so our Sam takes in a BAM file. I think we've included the BAM files and the FASTQ files, right? For each sample? No. We, we should have, I think. So in raw data too, there's also a FASTQ folder, right? Oh, maybe I didn't know that. I didn't see that. Yeah, let me just check real. I think so like, We've given you BAM files. CD FASTQ file. Yeah, they should be here. So we also have FASTQ files. Yeah, so the, the point of salmon is that um, it's like very fast. You you can just you can just give it the fastq file, and then it like so it doesn't actually like do alignment like star does. Um, it just kind of approximately figures out where in the genome or where in like the transcriptome that your read came from, since it's just for Genix for RNA C quantification. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I think you want to give it a FASTQ file for this. I right, um, mean, they're like, they they correspond. So like the BAM file that is like sample Y corresponds to the FASTQ file for sample Y. So yeah. I think you can give it a BAM file as input. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that yields the same result. Probably will. But yeah, FASTQ is input. Um, okay, so what is SAM and output? Um, so it's gonna output a whole directory, um, but one of, the in, one of the files in this directory is called quant.sf um, and it contains the expression levels, um, TPM, effective length, um, and then just read counts. Um, so I actually have to compute FPKM um, because it's the version that we have isn't going to give you FPKM. Um, alternatively, you could try to install a newer version of Salmon um, where it looks like FPKM is like automatically given to you. Um, but the formula is not too complicated. So um, I'd recommend just, just computing FPKM from the read counts and the effective length. Um, okay, and so let's just take a look at quant.sf. Um, so if I, it's like, it has like thousands of, of rows since each row is like a transcript and then the columns are gonna be um, these measurements. So let's just look at the first 10 lines by typing head minus 10 quant.sf. So I did that. Um, and so this is what showed up. Um, so 
the rows here, um, these are transcript IDs. I think, an, I think it's called an ensemble transcript ID, um, followed by length and kilobases, effective length, um, TPM, and then the read count. Um, and so these are all zero, uh, so these genes aren't expressed, but somewhere in this like, um, somewhere in the, these like, in this file, there, there will be genes that are expressed. I um, mean, part of the problem in, in the homework asks you to identify the gene with the highest level of expression. But to, to answer this question, I think we'd really prefer you not to give like the transcript ID in ensemble format. We really want to, we really want to know the gene symbol. So for example, like CD8 is a gene symbol and that we know, like I can kind of guess what that gene is associated with. Um, if you just give me like an ensemble ID number, um, I have no idea like what this one is. Um, and so you're gonna have to convert this to gene symbol. Um, and one way to do that is with Biomart. Um, and so if there's time at the end, which it looks like there will be, um, I can actually like show you how to use Biomart. Um, but basically it's a database um, that allows you to convert between all these different like ID numbers. Um, and so I think the first one here is 00004151118. Um, and so I go to Biomart, which is here, and it's a database, and I put in that ID number. Um, and then what it produces first is like, here are conversions um, to these other ID numbers. And the gene stable ID, so then if I click this, this actually takes me to the gene for which the transcript came from. And so it's TRDD1. And then you can see like a description of it. It's associated with T cell receptors. Um, you can see where it is. And it, there's even some more information. Um, it's not very interesting in this case since this gene wasn't expressed at all. Um, but when we ask like which gene had the highest expression, um, we'd prefer you to give gene symbol not just ensemble ID. Um, yeah, so I can give a demo of how to like use Biomart. There's also an R package called Biomart um, in case you, but since like, so this problem only asks you to do the one with the highest expression. Um, so if you're just looking to convert one, um, I think Biomart, just like using the online database is enough. If you have like, if you wanted to convert everything to gene symbol, um, then using the R package is probably more, a better idea. Um, yeah, but I can give a demo of that at the end. Okay, the final thing is just how to run RSAM. Um, and so the difference between RSAM and Salmon, um, is that for our Sam, I guess, you first need to get a BAM file containing the alignments. Um, but, so I'm wondering if you can just use the BAM file that's already given to you, now that I think about it. Um, but I, but I think the problem explicitly asks you to run star and then to run rsam. So let's start with the fastq file um, and then get the BAM file that we can pass to rsam, which also does RNA-seq quantification. Um, and so the command here, is, and I got this out of the star reference manual that I attached earlier in the PowerPoint. Um, but to give it, to give input to rsam, so you want to call star and then you have your default parameters here, um, which are like path to genome directory, fastq file. These are the parameters that we talked about earlier. But then you also want to add these two options, which are quant mode, transcriptome, SAM. So it's, a, it's going to output a SAM file. Um, and then the output, no, it's actually going to output a BAM file because that's what our SAM needs. And it's going to be sorted by location. Um, and the purpose of this is this is just what 
type of file that our SAM is going to want as input. So you have to run this first, um, and then it's going to create a file called align to transcriptome out.bam, and you're going to pass that file as input into our SAM. Um, okay, and so once you do that, um, the main command for our SAM that you're going to use is our SAM dash calculate dash expression. Um, and so it can output a BAM file. Um, we don't actually need that. So we, we can say no need to give us that. You want to make sure that you write dash dash time because for problem five, it's going to ask you how long did this take? And if you do this, it's going to, it's going to give you a file that like describes the total runtime and actually the runtime for like each part of the algorithm. So just make sure you do this for problem five. Um, BAM, so you're going to specify that the input is a BAM file. Number of threads. Input file. Um, so this is the name of the input file that we obtained here in the align to transcriptome. Um, there's also a reference for RSAM, which is in the stat115 index folder. And then finally, you can name the sample because it will also create an output directory. Um, and below, I guess this shows like what a typical run would look like actually at the actually at the command line. So our SAM calculate expression, um, options such as number of threads, time. Um, you're going to give it a BAM file. Um, then the input, which is the align to transcriptome.bam, the reference name, which is in the stat115 index folder. And then this sample name you can you can choose. Hey Philip, I have a question. So for the reference name, is that the path to file for the index? I did that, but then it actually didn't run. Oh, so the so the index is an entire folder. Right. I suppose I specify to that folder, but then I also look at the manual. It says it's the reference name. So it's like the name of the kind of like the prefix. Because uh, it says that the user must have run RSEM prepare reference before using the reference. So are you specifying the absolute path to the reference? That's why I did initially, but then I didn't run. So I'm just wondering why. So like we've ran RSAM prepare reference for you and we should have saved it in that folder um did you run star first yeah i input the aligned.bam file did you put them in the right order because order like matters here so you need to yeah you i input. used the exact order like what you're showing hmm. i guess uh did you load our sand oh yeah i assume you load it otherwise it wouldn't give you an error message yeah. Uh, it's okay. I'll, I'll try it. Hmm. Do you mind, like, I guess, emailing me your mm -hmm. bash code? Or just yeah. somewhere where, like, nobody else can see it. Sure. Thank you. I, I'll at least take a look at the line, see if I can find anything. Um, okay. And so the RSAM output, it's pretty much, oh, so it's contained in dot isoforms dot results. Uh, but it's basically the same as salmon. Um, except it actually gives you FPKM, so you don't have to compute it yourself, um, which is nice. Um, yeah, so so we already um, talked about like what this file means with all the transcript IDs. It also gives you the gene ID, I guess, which is nice. Um, okay. Yeah, and I guess finally, I just want to quickly talk about like what an answer to problem six would look like because. It's pretty open-ended. I think it just says like, compare like the various metrics um, that you got in problem four. Um, and so really, I just think, you know, you just want to provide some plots, um, some sentences that like describe what you did. Um, but for example, like one thing that you might do is ask um, if the metrics for gene expression are correlated, right? So like. I know there's like some people like TPM, some people like FPKM. Um, 
you could ask like how across all genes or across all transcripts that we got from salmon or from our SAM, are TPM and FPKM correlated? Um, also, we could ask, you know, which one should I use, our SAM or salmon? So you could compute the correlation between like the TPM from our SAM and the TPM from salmon to see if these algorithms are really producing, I guess, the same results. Um, yeah, so I think like answering those two questions would be a good place to start, but also it's kind of open-ended. So I think if you have a question that you think would be interesting to pursue, go ahead and do that. Um, you know, one option is a heat map showing correlations between the metrics might be kind of a natural approach for this problem since um, you can have like on each row is like TPM, FPKM, read counts, effective length. And then like each like grid, so it would be like a four by four grid and each um, square in that grid would have like the correlation between the two, the row and the column. Um, that might be a good approach, um, but it's it's pretty open-ended. So I guess, yeah. Um,